Welcome, everybody. My name is Christian Ludwig. I'm a head of investor relations at Deutz. Today, I would like to give you a walk through our company presentation. But to kick it off, please have a quick look at our disclaimer. Deutz at a glance. Deutz is an independent engine producer focusing on off-highway applications. We were founded more than 150 years ago in Cologne, which is still our headquarter. Today, we are active in more than 130 countries. And last year, we had sales of roughly 1.3 billion. We see ourselves as a technology leader made in Germany, focusing on combustion powertrains using diesel, LPG, CNG, but also alternative fuels. We are also developing a broad range of products for the E and hydrogen mobility. Now, a quick word on our strategy. As you probably all are aware, our market environment is currently faced with many moving parts. Emission reductions, noise cancellation, optimization of drive solutions, the sustainability of well to wheel views, all are elements that drive our business decisions. The answer to this are manifold. Zero emission targets, e-fuels, hybridization, electrification, downsizing can all be a step forward toward the solution of a carbon neutral mobility. Our additional challenge is that all these requirements meet a highly diversified customer base. We're focused on the off-highway segment. These are, for instance, agricultural machinery OEMs, construction machinery OEMs, but also material handling OEMs with very diverse applications like telehandlers or aircraft pushback machinery. And we also have a small business that makes electric drivetrains for boats. We believe the best way to service our customers in the future is to have an open-minded approach to technology. So for the combustion engine, we at the moment believe looking at biodiesel as well as multi-fuel, hydrogen, and eventual synthetic fuels is the best way to proceed. And in parallel, we are also looking at the electrification of the drivetrain with our e program. There we have mild hybrids as well as full hybrids, both in the low voltage of 48 volt and the high voltage of 360 volt. We're also looking at full battery powered drives that potentially are powered by a fuel cell. With this product portfolio, we believe we will have the optimal technology for each application our customer may require. So if you look at the bright variety of our customers, we have certain business models where electric power trends will fairly quickly gain ground. For instance, for small forklifts or also for airport handling equipment that for instance, tow luggage. Then there's a broad area where hybrid powertrains are the right way to go. The examples are of small excavators or telehandlers or also larger aerial work platforms. But we also have a certain area where we believe that electrification will not play a role anytime soon. You cannot imagine a combined harvester that has to run 24 seven during harvest season to take four hours break to reload the battery. That just doesn't make sense and is not economically feasible. Therefore, we believe an open-minded approach to technology is the right way for our customers to go forward. Next, I would like to discuss a little bit the growth drivers that are behind our business. If you look at our end markets, we believe that roughly 4.6 million engines are sold in the segments relevant to Deutz every year. But only 2.5 million of those engines are really serviceable for us because the captive engine departments of some of our customers are, of course, off limits. Out of those 2.5 million engines, though, roughly 40% or 1 million are today demanded in China. In the past, this market was not really available for us because the technology requirements in China were significantly lower. So basically, our engines were too expensive. But that has changed as demands in China have risen and also the emission requirements have started to increase as well. Our most important activity in China is our joint venture with Sony. Here we produced 20,000 units last year, expect to produce 40,000 units this year, and want to expand the business to 80,000 engines next year. The full capacity of the plant we're currently building is 200,000 units. The majority of this will go to Sony. So for other customers, we also have an activity in Tianjin. Here, we're just at the start of ramping the business up as China 4, the new emission regulation, will be the main driver for this business. This will come into place by 2022. Our target is to have 800 million of sales in China by next year. The majority of this will be in the Sani joint venture though, so you will not see it in our P&L. The next growth driver is the expansion of our service business. This 
historically has been very profitable. We have been able to grow it by almost 5% per year. And even in a very weak year like 2020, we were able to keep the service revenue almost flat versus the previous year. Our target is to increase our service revenue to 400 million by 2021. Growth drivers here are new distribution channels, as well as an expansion of the existing network, also new digital services, as well as expanding our analog service concepts to non doits engines, other warranty parts, and of course, in the future, e doit services. Now, let's have a look at our numbers. If we look at last year, of course, we had a significant decline in sales as well as EBIT due to the corona crisis. But we had a noticeable upper trend in the market already in Q3, especially in Q4. We also launched a Transform for Growth Efficiency Program, which burdened our results by roughly 32 million in restructuring cost. But we were able to give already an improved outlook for 2021 with the release of full year figures in March. In detail, if you look at our main sales figures, new orders were down 20%, unit sales were down even 29%, and revenue was down almost 30% last year. But the good news here is that in Q4, we were able to increase new orders by 25% versus the previous quarter, unit sales by 22%, and the revenue by 20%. If you look at our regional breakdown or our segmental breakdown, one thing sticks out. The decline in the Americas was disproportionately high. This is mainly due to our material handling segment. 80% of our material handling segment is done with aerial work platforms in the North American market. This business basically collapsed due to the COVID-19 crisis, and thus we had a disproportionate decline in the segment as well in that region. What also sticks out is the service business. As I mentioned before, we only had a marginal decline of roughly 1%. So that really shows how important this business is for us in difficult years, but as well as to grow the business going forward. Despite the strong decline in EBIT and the still significant investments into our future, we still were able to show a positive cash flow from operating activities last year. This is mainly due to the fact that we're able to drive down our working capital requirements significantly. While the working capital ratio still increased, we were able to save almost 60 million from working capital. Nevertheless, our free cash flow was negative last year, but not significantly more negative than the year before, but you have to take into account that in 2019, we also invested more than 60 million in M&A activities. Our net financial position dropped to minus 84 million by end of last year, but we are well funded. Our equity ratio only dropped five percentage points to 45.3%. And if you look at our debt situation, we have syndicated credit lines totaling 310 million and only a repayment requirement of 75 million in the next 12 months. So with this solid balance sheet, we're well prepared for the pickup in demand that we're currently seeing. Finally, a couple of words on our outlook. As said before, our business outlook has improved significantly. For 2021, we're currently expecting at least 130,000 engines sold, which implies revenue of at least 1.4 billion. And for the EBIT margin, we expect to at least break even after posting a loss of more than 100 million last year. On the free cash flow side though, due to the growth in working capital that we expect to support our business, a negative low to mid double digit amount has to be expected. And this is despite an expected one-off of roughly 60 million from the sale of a real estate asset where the final installment is due probably in Q3 this year. In the midterm, we are significantly more optimistic. Our target to achieve at least 2 billion in sales by 2023-24, paired with a 7 to 8% EBIT margin before exceptional items. We believe we're at the sweet spot of our investment cycle as the capacity is already in place to achieve these revenue numbers. So if this has piqued your interest and you're interested to look at closer at a German leading engineering company that is driving the transformation to a carbon neutral off-highway mobility, please give us a call. And thank you very much, Seat 11 a for giving us the opportunity to present today. Thank you very much and goodbye.
subscriber, since you watched this company video until the end. I'm guessing you liked the video. And that's probably because we work very hard, to create the most engaging, and added value content for you. If you're a company, and want to find out how we, at Seat 11A, can make a company video with, and about you, please email us, at, content at seat11a.com.